Hello and welcome to this special edition of India Fights Back on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and uh, it is indeed a historic day today. The mission vaccination has begun world's largest vaccination program as far as COVID-19 pandemic is concerned, uh, wherein the Prime Minister inaugurated today uh, at 3,000 centres. Uh, the vaccine will be uh, delivered to or rather administered to these health workers and frontline workers, at least 100 uh, health workers and frontline workers every day will receive uh, these two vaccines, that is Covishield uh, as well as Covaxin. And this uh, drive after taking care of uh, three crore health workers uh, and frontline workers will then involve uh, other 27 crore people, those about the age of 60 and those below the age of 60 with comorbidities as per the prioritized groups decided by the government. So today indeed is a very, very important and historic day. We'll talk more about it, about the vaccines, about the drive itself. And for more on this, we're also joined by a panel of three guests. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Professor Y.K. Gupta, President of AIMS Bhopal, is joining us. We also have with us Urvashi Prasad, the Public Policy specialist at uh, Niti Aayog, looking after the health portfolio. And we're also joined by Dr. Santa Sabujtas, he's scientist F at ICMR and ICED Kolkata. Welcome all of you to Rajya Sabha Television. But before we start our discussion, let's also listen in to what the Prime Minister had to say when he inaugurated this uh, vaccination drive. The health ministry has circulated a fact sheet to the states for both Covishield and Covaxin. The fact sheet includes physical specifications, dosage, cold chain storage requirements, contraindications and any adverse event following immunization. COVID-19 vaccine is to be administered to those above the age of 18 years. Administration of vaccine should be separated by an interval of 14 days. The second dose should be of the same vaccine as the first dose interchanging of vaccines is not allowed. The Health Ministry has clearly stated those for whom the COVID vaccine is contraindicated, persons with history of anaphylactic or allergic reaction to a previous dose of COVID-19 vaccine are contraindicated. Pregnant and lactating women should not receive COVID-19 vaccine at this time. Vaccines should be administered with caution in persons with history of bleeding or coagulation disorder. On the provision, Temporary contraindications, the Health Ministry has said, that the COVID vaccination is to be deferred for four to eight weeks after recovery. Those with active symptoms of SARS-CoV-2 infection, SARS-CoV-2 patients who have been given anti-SARS-CoV-2 monoclonal antibodies on convalescent plasma, and acutely unwell and hospitalized patients due to any other illness. <laughs> ये बात फिर याद दिलाना चाहता हूं कि कोरोना वैक्सीन की दो डोज लगनी बहुत जरूरी है एक डोज ले लिया और फिर भूल गए ऐसे आप गलती मत करना और जैसा एक्सपर्ट्स कह रहे हैं पहली और दूसरी डोज के बीच लगभग एक महीने का अंतराल भी रखा जाएगा आपको यह भी याद रखना है कि दूसरी डोज लगाने के दो हफ्ते बाद ही आपके शरीर में कोरोना के विरुद्ध जरूरी शक्ति विकसित हो पाएगी टीका लगते ही आप असावधानी बरतने लगे मास निकाल कर रख दें दो गज की दूरी भूल जाए ये सब मत करिएगा मैं प्रार्थना करता हूं मत करिएगा और मैं आपको एक और चीज बहुत आग्रह से कहना चाहता हूं जिस तरह धैर्य के साथ आपने कोरोना का मुकाबला किया वैसे ही धैर्य अब वैक्सीनेशन के समय भी दिखाना है सो देर इट इज यू हर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव एज वेल एज द गाइडलाइंस विच वर अर्लियर रिलीज बाय द हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव लेट्स नाउ ब्रिंग इन आर 
panel of experts here and let's try and understand all aspects of uh, this vaccination drive. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Urvashi, and, uh, you know, let's, let's look at what the Prime Minister said, uh, you know, today as far as uh, this particular vaccination drive inauguration is concerned. He underlined two very important significant facts. One is that everybody has to take uh, two doses of the vaccines and also not to forget about the COVID-appropriate behaviour even after you've been vaccinated. Yes, that's right. I think the Prime Minister highlighted, uh, you know, several important points today. Uh, one is, you know, the months of, of very uh, hard work, effort that has gone into developing this. And it's just important to have this context that, you know, vaccines can take years to develop. Uh, and there are many diseases for which we still don't have vaccines. So if we put it in that context, what we managed to do uh, for COVID is actually quite unprecedented. And it just shows that when we collectively prioritize, come together, have public-private partnerships, we can actually achieve a lot uh, in a very short span of time. So I think that is one very important point he made. Uh, of course, he spoke about how the process will happen, who the priority groups will be. And of course, right, rightly so, it will be our health workers and our frontline workers uh, who are prioritized for the vaccination. Uh, we will be ha having 3,000 sites to begin with and, and around 100 um, vaccinations every day across the sites so so this and that number will of course be progressively ramped up and then yes as you said you know he did emphasize uh the vibe bhi, karai bhi, you know so we need to of course we will be having the uh, coverage of the vaccination expanding and and that will be very very important in this fight against covid but we cannot let go uh, of the mask, the distancing, the hand hygiene. So that he really repeated again and again as a very important reminder to everybody uh, that both the strategies need to go uh, hand in hand. Okay, okay, indeed, uh, that uh, is uh, really, really important out there. But Urushi, the way you pointed out, uh, the first aspect, that is, you know, the hard work which has gone into this, and this itself is uh, definitely uh, an achievement uh, wherein the vaccine has come in almost within an year of uh, the pandemic uh, uh, striking the humanity there. Let me bring in uh, uh, Professor Vaike Gupta here as well, who's been closely involved with this entire pro uh, process. Professor Gupta, how easy or difficult do you think uh, this, this entire year has been uh, and, and going by those people who are involved with the process of developing vaccine candidates? And several of them, let's not forget, are still in various stages. Uh, and we might get to have, uh, you know, a few more vaccines in the next few weeks or months. I would say that uh, India has uh, shown that the scientists of India can rise to the occasion when it is challenged to. And I must say that our leader, Prime Minister, is, has a capability to enthuse the scientists of the country to take the challenge. And this is for the first time the vaccine for the corona has been developed in a record short time without cutting any corner, <clears throat> safe vaccine, effective vaccine for such a large country is a challenge. And this is because of the scientists, the microbiologists, virologists, the epidemiologists, the clinicians, and the regulator have come together. Vaccine making is one challenge, but equally important challenge is how to make necessary arrangement of cold chain, how to make arrangement for transportation, how to train such a vast country's re requirement for those who are vaccine giver, how to make the effective system for AEFI, adverse event after immunization, and how to do the media management so that the public does not get distracted the public has the confidence on this vaccination program and how to counter those afwa or what can say the misconception which he, which is sometimes created that this vaccine can cause this this vaccine can cause impotence or like this and this so we have to fight in multiple aspects and the mm -hmm. government has so successfully done it i must compliment scientists i must compliment our leadership first and I must compliment those administrators who have done the entire job in such a meticulous way. Okay. Okay. Indeed, uh, everybody uh, is uh, deserving <coughs> of that compliment which uh, Professor 
Mike Gupta was referring to, starting from the frontline workers to the scientists, everybody involved there. Let me bring in uh, Dr. S. S. Das here as well. Uh, Dr. Das, uh, from your point yes. of view, in terms of uh, you know the kind of work uh, which has gone into ensuring that the vaccine candidate uh, is developed and is ready within the shortest possible time. And as Professor Gupta was uh, was pointing to, it this indeed in itself uh, is is a very historic achievement. Yeah, I would um, fully agree with him uh, that this is really a historic achievement and a matter of great pride uh, for uh, the entire nation. And uh, it's not so, as we all know that India has over the time uh, become as developed as the vaccine hub of the world. So we have the not only the largest capacity to produce vaccine, a lot of uh, countries uh, the developing and less developed countries, they depend on our uh, vaccine production and uh, as uh, they will be depending this time too, because as you, have, as you have seen, although unfortunately a lot of Western countries have shown that so-called vaccine nationalism, they are uh, acquiring vaccine, storing it for their own population. On the other hand, we are not producing only the vaccine only for ourselves, but we have also pledged to provide uh, vaccines to the to other countries, our neighbors, to Africa, and you know, recently Brazil has also uh, appealed to us. So this is, you know, India has a huge responsibility, uh, and India has actually uh, taken that responsibility, gladly accepted that uh, responsibility. And also another important thing in this case is that um, uh, so far, you know, most of the cases, if you look at other vaccines, uh, they are uh, designed. Uh, and primarily developed in the, the Western world, and then India has manufactured that. But this time we also have, along with the vaccine, uh, Oxford vaccine, in the, in the first uh, go, uh, we also have simultaneously an entirely indigenously produced vaccine, a virus isolated in ICMR laboratories, and an Indian company has collaborated with that to develop the vaccine and, you know, has gone into phase one, two trial and already in the phase three trial and has got emergency approval. So, you know, in all respects, uh, this is a, is a is really a remarkable time uh, for uh, the country and uh, also the world, uh, world I'm, I'm sure that uh, is looking up to India, uh, its achievement in vaccinating its own people and providing it uh, to other countries indeed. Okay, definitely. That uh, is, is a very, very significant aspect there, as Professor uh, Dr. Das was uh, referring to. Let me bring in Urvashi here on that aspect. Urvashi, as uh, Dr. Das was pointing out, you know, it's not only about India being the hub of uh, vaccine manufacturing. We've been there for all other vaccines which are manufactured. But this time around, uh, India is now becoming a global leader in terms of developing vaccine candidates as well as showing to the world the supply chain management as well. That is very, very significant because we have seen in, in, in several European nations uh, how the supply chain management, you know, uh, got a little uh, confused and that led to uh, a bit of a roadblock in the vaccine uh, vaccination program there. Yes, I think, you know, firstly, it's it's really important, and this is also something the Prime Minister mentioned, that, you know, these vaccines have been developed for our conditions uh, and to meet our affordability requirements. And that is a really important aspect. Of course, we can get in vaccines developed as Elsewhere. But the importance of these vaccines is that they are much more cost effective. They do not require the kind of very low temperatures that some of the other vaccines require for storage. So that's another very important point that he highlighted. Uh, and that is why these Atmanirbhar vaccines or, you know, the, the vaccines developed in India uh, become even more important. The other point you mentioned about supply chain, absolutely. I mean, the countries that, you know, we're talking about, the other European countries, they don't have the kind of scale and diversity that we have. And despite that, uh, we have made arrangements to not only get the vaccine to every part of the country, but to set up all the distribution channels, to shore up the supplies, the syringes, the needles, to put in place the cold uh, chain system, and also the cold application, the digital app we've developed, which will actually help us to track where the system is in real time. You know, what are the temperatures? If there are any issues, the system will flag that to us. And of course, at the beneficiary level, uh, the system will help us to track every single beneficiary and every single dose. So if we just put all this together, it is really quite a mammoth task uh, doing it in a country of our scale, of our diversity. 
and there are so many lessons that you know other countries uh, will be able to take from this how to organize such a big exercise in such a short span of time in the midst of a pandemic so yes okay. i think it is really something quite incredible okay definitely it is indeed incredible that brings me back to uh, professor yk gupta on on this aspect which rubashi brought out in fact uh, i wanted to bring this earlier when you were uh, uh, you know referring to how this entire process will happen in terms of the way technology has been used uh, uh, um, professor gupta the co win app which we uh, are using uh, how how is that being used and how does that add a lot of value and clears a lot of roadblocks when we talk about the supply chain management and obviously digitizing uh, the entire database is is going to be really significant uh, in the days and weeks to come for us to further study and understand uh, the, the the way these vaccines behave i would say that india has used the it sector tremendously effectively in this entire process of supply chain in this entire process of the identifying the people linking the vaccination with aadhar card and just then uh, reminding the person that you is the first dose and now you are due for the second dose and also linking the possibility of the adverse effect recording reporting collating and then analyzing the data of what is happening after vaccination and also maintaining cold chain the data entire data so that if there is any break in the cold chain system happens it is immediately brought to the notice and the remedial corrective measures are taken immediately if there is a vaccine which is short at one particular center and there is availability of the other center then this can be shifted for fast and the entire process that the vaccination has been covered to how many people or how many people doses are required in that particular center so i think this covin the the app is one of the success vaccine is a success the management of the supply chain is a success the enthusiasm being given by the leadership the scientists is a success the indian council of medical research is a success combining this indian council of medical research with the industry is a grand academia and the public partnership is a success and entire thing is roped in one row by the covin is a great success i would say okay. so covin app is is has a tremendous utility if you say the entire process of vaccination in the country okay okay uh, dr das uh, your views on uh, the uh, you know utility as well as significance of uh, the covin app platform and the way you know the digital technology is being used uh, how is it adding value yeah i mean um, as uh, uh, professor bike uh, gupta has mentioned you know there are many success stories uh, implied in this whole effort that we have taken up and um, uh, among them covin is is to be particularly mentioned because you know uh, first of all not only that uh, the country i mean we have done a lot of vaccinations uh, uh, and you know with with variable degree of success but a vaccination drive to this extent uh, uh, potentially you know targeting every single citizen of the country um, in due course of time has never been taken up and uh, over and above so this is very important that you know you track the the whole thing uh, that it is properly done because you know as we understand that the the ulti- the target of this uh, vaccination is that to develop a kind of uh, immunity uh, that you know which we, we may call it a hard uh, immunity uh, that will actually interrupt the transmission of the the uh, infection this particular pandemic so it's a it's a significant uh, population a large population has to be covered so it's very important to actually monitor this the whole thing and there are multiple doses so it's not a single dose vaccine so that you know the the second dose is given and also uh, i mean the the moment the vaccine comes out of the uh, the manufacturing hub and then it it's it's transport to the the uh, user and you know all the other associated things like you know uh, i mean maintaining cold chain and then you know if, if there is any adverse events and then mm-hmm. the second dose so everything that, i mean starting from the 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 source and to the the completion of the vaccine so recording these things is very very critical if we want to achieve uh, our intended goal and so in 
in view of this, this digital technology, which will monitor every single thing uh, about this vaccination, is, is very, very necessary and very essential. And this will be, you know, kind of a, 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 a lesson to the mankind, I would say, if we can successfully do it. And mm -hmm. then this will be then in, replicated uh, not only for COVID vaccination to other countries, but for, you know, all the uh, future vaccinations uh, to come in. So this is absolutely critical. And uh, I, I do sincerely hope that with the, the might, uh, the software uh, and, and IT uh, uh, technology might that India has, uh, I'm very sure that we'll, be, we'll successfully achieve this and uh, set a, a kind of a, 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 um, an example uh, of how a okay. large vaccination drive can be, can be monitored and executed properly. Okay, okay, indeed, uh, that will be an example to the entire world, uh, what we're talking about, the use of technology and ensuring that the supply chain management is taken care of, all the other related aspects are also taken care of. Uh, that brings me to one more uh, uh, very important aspect, and I'd like to start with Urvashi here. Urvashi, the vaccine uh, has been developed uh, in a remarkably short time, uh, the way we've seen our scientists working on it and, uh, you know, other uh, allied uh, people involved with this as well. Now the vaccination drive has also begun and the technology is also being used. But there are certain challenges as well when we talk about vaccination drive at such a large level and that too, this is, let's not forget, uh, an adult vaccination drive for, uh, you know, uh, it's not for specifically for children, uh, which we have always done. So one major challenge here is uh, vaccine hesitancy to, to make people aware that yes, uh, these vaccines are safe. Uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, very, very proper in terms of immunogenicity as well. And it's, it's pretty safe uh, to go ahead and have those vaccines. Uh, Prime Minister himself was referring to this uh, in his uh, inaugural speech as well. There have been several communication campaigns also. So how would you go ahead and define this in terms of, you know, for our viewers to understand further that let's, let's make this successful. Let th these vaccines are here. Let's start with them and, you know, uh, score victory over COVID. Yes, that's right. And and in fact, the success of, of any uh, such vaccination effort uh, is really going to be determined to a very large extent also by the community partnership. And that is why the part, uh, the prime minister again and again emphasizes the Jan Bhagidari aspect. Uh, of course, the government it's do, is doing its part to get the message out that these vaccines are safe, efficacious, uh, no corners have been cut, uh, and also doing its best to dispel any myths and misconceptions which inevitably come up when we talk of vaccines. In fact, some of the vaccines, which, uh, even with those, sometimes you see certain misconceptions coming about in certain communities, you see certain hesitancy. Now here, of course, we are talking about a completely new disease and a completely new vaccine. So it is quite expected, but it's really important, uh, you know, for people to understand that this has gone through all the due processes and only then have these vaccines been brought out and of course the government will remain vigilant uh, about any major adverse events should they come up and that is why all these monitoring systems have also been developed so that should uh, you know something come up the government will remain vigilant and take due action so people should not uh, worry on that front uh, and they should really come forward to take this vaccine because that is really a major stride that we will take towards ending uh, this pandemic. Uh, and of course, if there are any myths, any misconceptions, any rumors, uh, people also need to come forward, partner with the government in dispelling these, uh, in sharing the right information uh, with their families, their friends, their, their networks. Uh, so really, the community partnership with the government uh, is going to be very, very important uh, in making sure that this vaccination drive is a major success. Okay, okay, indeed, uh, the community partnership is uh, a very, very significant, uh, important aspect there. Professor uh, Waike Gupta, your views as far as, you know, tackling challenges like uh, vaccine hesitancy is concerned, uh, what is being done and what more needs to be done? As Urbashi is pointing out, one important aspect is community participation, of course, uh, people being, uh, uh, you know, made aware and then they make others also aware of the safety, <coughs> efficacy and immunogenicity of these vaccines. I would say that it is the duty of all of us collectively to educate politicians, administrators, highly educated people, people in cities, people far in villages, 
who are not educated tell them in the language and in the manner which they can understand that when a vaccine is introduced into the country it goes into a very rigorous process by the regulator and the experts do analysis of each and every data and then they come out that yes now this can be given because this is a safe safe means it is a absolutely i am not say 110% because nothing like that but it is a safe and therefore hesitancy vaccine is hazardous is hazardous now there will be myths that this vaccine cause can cause this this vaccine can cause this anything which can cause a some side effect has to be recorded and they must be told that there is a checks and balances exist today in the country so by giving vaccine by taking vaccine there should not be any hesitancy at all this is for good for them they must believe in the scientists of the country which have worked day night they must believe in the leadership which they have allowed they must believe in indian council of medical research which has and our other scientific organization which has collectively done not for self but for the nation and therefore vaccine hesitancy i would say is hazardous must tell everybody every person who understand this must communicate to all his people around that this myth must not be allowed to persist mm-hmm. vaccine is safe safety wall exists and therefore one must feel pride in this okay thank okay, you definitely it is uh, indeed a proud moment and everybody needs to be made aware of dr das uh, your views there on uh, you know these challenges and specifically the vaccine hesitancy part the need to make people aware right so this hesitancy has basically two aspects one is about the safety concerns as professor gupta has uh, rightly highly highlighted Uh, and also dr rubersi so that is the first thing comes to people's mind that whether you know should i can may i fall ill after taking vaccine with something else if not uh, with covid with something else so the safety is the first concern and this has to be uh, and and the other concern is efficacy well if i take the vaccine am i protected how much uh, am i protected and uh, how long so first thing one good thing is that the both the vaccines have gone through you know, extensive phase 1 and 2 trial at least and the safety of the vaccines both the vaccines have been ensured so that has to be communicated to the people properly that there is absolutely no safety concern about either of the vaccines so anybody people irrespective of their age sex Uh, and uh, pre-existing disease conditions that can they can take vaccines and who are not to be taken vaccine you know uh, this has been you know before our session uh, it was being mentioned so it's clearly laid out uh, laid down that who are not to be given the vaccine so mm-hmm. that has that will be taken care of so the safety is no concern and second and this will be more important because particularly when the children or elderly people with comorbidities who are the you know will be perhaps after healthcare will be the next uh, lot to be given so that concern will come about the safety so that has to be dispelled out at this point number 2 is about the efficacy of the vaccine well now uh, the question is uh, that you know uh, regarding the efficacy by the time uh, first of all uh, we must also you know insist upon people that you take vaccine doesn't mean that you take away all the other precautions Mm-hmm. well that may give some kind of you know confusing message to people well i'm uh, so then why to take the vaccine so we have to you know make people sure that even if you are protected you know uh, with the vaccination but you may because but you may still carry the virus which you may transmit to others okay, okay. you may not develop the disease but you can transmit the disease to others because you know these vaccines are uh, not they are giving protection against because they will raise antibodies giving protections against uh, uh, disease development but not necessarily protecting against acquiring of infection okay so the virus can still enter your body 
but will not cause uh, disease if you are properly vaccinated. So then you can still, uh, uh, there is a possibility that uh, you can uh, transmit the disease to others. So you do take usual precautions of, you know, uh, wearing masks and, you know, washing hands on all these things. So that has to be properly communicated uh, to people. Now, mm -hmm. this is very important. Okay. And, okay. Uh, yeah, and another thing I would say, you know, I agree that. So regarding the both the safety and the, the requirement of the vaccine, so this can be uh, an example can be set uh, by the uh, the people who are uh, in, a, in a position of authority or who, whom other people trust. Like say, for example, now initially this is the hospital, uh, the, the healthcare workers who will be uh, vaccinated. Now, if in a hospital, uh, departmental head or the director of the hospital, they start with the vaccination drive. I'm sure that the rest of the hospital staff will not hesitate uh, to take the vaccines. So that way, you know, we can, you know, celebrities can come uh, forward, religious leaders can come forward, and the political leaders take vaccines themselves. It has been done uh, in the West, you know, it has, it has it is done in the in US also. We have seen how the political leaders have taken the vaccine uh, okay. shot first. So that can be done here. And so communicating to people about both safety and usefulness of the vaccine is very, very critical uh, at this stage. Okay, definitely uh, setting an example and communicating to the people about the safety and uh, efficacy of the vaccine is very important. Dr. Das, now that we're talking about, uh, you know, this aspect here, let's once again, uh, you know, uh, inform our viewers, uh, sort of sum it up for them in terms of these two vaccines, that is Covishield and Covaxin, the kind of, you know, vaccination schedule which has to be followed, how many doses, uh, at what, uh, you know, interval, and uh, their efficacy as well. Uh, all these aspects, if you could, uh, you know, uh, re uh, uh, frame for our viewers and uh, you know uh, let's 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 brief them once again okay so uh, these two vaccines uh, well both are uh, meant for uh, covid-19 infection uh, and to be given the the same uh, population but again uh, it's to be mentioned that they are uh, approved on uh, the use of emergency basis so they will be given uh, supplied by the government and the every vaccine uh, will be uh, monitored for, you know, closely monitored for any adverse events, and uh, then they will be taken care of by the the health system which is delivering the vaccine. So this mm -hmm. is the, the the one thing, and then uh, the COVID shield that vaccine that has been uh, developed in the uh, in Oxford and now uh, produced in India by uh, Serum Institute. This is basically uh, uh, adenoviral, uh, so it's a it's a it's a viral vector based vaccine. Uh, obviously, this is a virus that doesn't uh, replicate or doesn't, you know, uh, grow in human body. So it's a chimpanzee virus. So that way, it is it is not uh, likely to be uh, given uh, any any cross protection or a cross immunity against the other uh, infections. So that way, it's it's good. And this will be producing a particular part of the um, uh, virus that we uh -huh. all know as a uh, spike protein. Now, common people also have heard about it. So, which is responsible for the viral entry into our body. And as opposed to that, we have that indigenous, entirely indigenous vaccine, which is Covishield, uh, which is a Covaxin, co -vaccine. which is a, as a yeah, co vaccine, which is the whole virus based vaccine. It's a, an inactivated, so virus is not, not going to cause any disease. Uh, uh, so, it's a uh, coronavirus, which has been you know, made, say, a neutral or made, uh, say, uh, to, uh, not to cause any disease and are made like that. And mm -hmm. that will be, you know, introduced in the body. So body will generate a, a, a protective response against this. So when the live virus will attack us, so it will be, it will give the protection. Okay. Both the virus, you know, will require only, you know, a cold chain, but two to eight degree uh, cold chain, not a very, uh, you know, low temperature uh, chain. And both virus will be required to give uh, at least two doses. So that's mm -hmm. as of now. So that is very important what, the Prime Minister has also insisted that not to forget uh, uh, taking the second dose after taking the first dose because two doses are required. And um, as of now, this is probably 14 days uh, interval that has been uh, thought of, but, you know, it could be 14 to 28 days. This may be modified later on, uh, you know, depending on the the necessity and how many doses uh, we, we have uh, eventually. Uh, but, you know, two doses are required uh, for protection. Uh, and... Um, um, the protective response starts after, you know, around two weeks after the second dose. 
Uh, okay. but, and, you know, uh, saying all this, the usual uh, practice that we are taking, the, the, the safety uh, measures, mask, hand wash, uh, distance, uh, physical distancing, that has to be continued uh, okay. with this for better protection. Okay, okay, definitely that is uh, much required, you know, the COVID appropriate behavior has to follow there. But, uh, you know, these are really, really important points which you mentioned, uh, Dr. Das, in terms of these two specific vaccines. I'd like to bring in uh, Professor Vaike Gupta here once again. Professor Gupta, we have two vaccines now, two vaccines uh, developed there with which we're starting the vaccination drive. But, uh, uh, you know, we there are other vaccine candidates also which are in various stages of development and few of them are indigenous as well. Uh, you know, one of them is apparently an mRNA vaccine. So if you could tell our viewers uh, the, the status of these vaccine candidates and once these vaccine candidates get the approval from the regulator, will, uh, what will be uh, the kind of, uh, you know, strategy which will be followed? Uh, will these vaccines also join the vaccination drive uh, or, or there is some other strategy being thought of there? Professor Gupta? Okay, Urvashi, uh, your views there on the vaccines which are being developed, uh, the vaccine candidates which are still in developing stages, that clearly indicates, uh, you know, the prowess of uh, uh, Indian scientific community. Yes, that's right. And I think we can, you know, reasonably expect uh, that we will have a few other uh, options available to us, you know, maybe later this year or or by next year. Of course, across the world also, but in but in India as well. Uh, given all the, the emphasis that we are giving on things that have also been relevant as part of the Anirbhar Bharat Abhyan to actually incentivize. Uh, local uh, production, local innovation, um, you know, in both the pharma as well as the medical devices sector. So I think this will give a further fillip and boost uh, to indigenous manufacturing, and we can definitely expect uh, more candidates to uh, come forward. Okay, okay. Dr. Das, are there uh, your views yes. on these, uh, you know, uh, uh, these uh, particular uh, vaccine candidates which are under the development stage, as I was asking uh, earlier, you know, how will that happen when we have more vaccine, uh, you know, being approved uh, by the regulator? Uh, that obviously will, will factor in our strategy of the entire vaccination uh, schedule which we are following. Yeah, so, you know, it's very uh, important. Uh, I mean, it will be eventually we will require because you know that as of now, uh, we have only maybe a little over 50 million vaccine doses available, including both of them, uh, the COVID shield and uh, co-vaccine. So considering the huge Indian population, certainly, you know, one or two vaccines will not be enough to cover the entire population. So uh, we will definitely require more vaccines. And good thing is that most of these other vaccines, uh, be it Pfizer vaccine, be it modern vaccine. So they, are, they have, you know, uh, tied up with Indian companies um, uh, like Novavax has also tied up with Serum Institute. So they have tied up with the Indian companies for manufacturing because as you know, we have uh, discussed at the beginning, India uh, become becoming the manufacturing hub. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, there are, you know, more indigenous vaccines, completely indigenous vaccines like, uh, like Covaxin. Uh, using different platforms. So they are also uh, being developed. So eventually, say, I mean, I hope that uh, around six months from now, we will probably have uh, five or six uh, vaccine uh, vaccines available. So we'll have a choice. One On one thing is that we'll have greater coverage. And secondly, you know, eventually, um, some of these vaccines will be available in the market. So uh, we can directly go and buy it. So people will have a choice uh, to uh, to buy the vaccine but uh, uh, i mean what is important is that to vaccinate as large population as possible so that Indeed. you know eventually we are able to break the uh, chain uh, chain of transmission of the infection so okay. that is the, the goal that we have to achieve okay Indeed. Indeed, uh, that's uh, the ultimate goal there. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Das uh, Urvashi, as well as Professor Vaike Gupta for uh, sharing your uh, 
views uh, with us and our viewers on this very important aspect as our panelists were pointing out and as the Prime Minister in his uh, inaugural speech uh, you know, referred to there are two, three various very important aspects. One, it is indeed a very, very historic occasion for India, its scientific community, our frontline workers and even the common citizens of the country that the vaccination drive for COVID-19 has begun with two vaccines. Uh, one of them which has been indigenously developed, other being indigenously manufactured, and there are several other vaccine candidates which are under development, a few of them, of course, indigenous, which will then empower us further in this fight against COVID-19 pandemic. A few things which are pretty much clear here is that there is nothing to worry about as far as the security, the safety, the efficacy and immunogenicity of these two vaccines are concerned. Everything has been taken care of before uh, being given the approval by the regulatory authorities there. So let us move ahead and uh, make our contribution visible there in this vaccination drive. One more aspect before we go is that uh, despite the fact that there is a vaccine now and few more, few more are also on the way, let us not forget about the COVID appropriate behavior. It's a simple three-step process which all of us need to follow even after we get vaccinated. That is, wear your mask at all times. Also ensure that you wash your hands regularly. Hand hygiene is equally important. And do not forget to maintain the physical distancing of six feet from other people when you are in public places. This, these three simple steps will keep you and your near and dear ones healthy. Thank you for watching Rajasabha Television.